And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, another very, very special guest, um, another hero, in fact, an icon of courage, of resilience, and of resistance. She's only 22 years old. She's also an athlete, um, but sadly, she is not allowed to pursue her career in her own country. She has been a refugee here in Paris since 2021, protected by the police for expressing herself on women's rights and the condition of her sisters in Afghanistan. So ladies and gentlemen, I do hope that you will join me in extending a very, very big uh, welcome on stage to Marzge Hamidi. Thank you so much for joining us. Truly honored and really happy to have you with us today. Uh, please grab a microphone because I have some questions for you, of course. Um, so for those who don't know it yet, you are an Afghan Taekwondo athlete. And like I mentioned, you were forced to flee your country when the Taliban uh, regime regained control in 2021. And you have been in France ever since. So perhaps to begin with, um, can you share how uh, your love for Taekwondo started, began, and how the sport has shaped you and shaped your identity and your, your future, your vision and your life now. Thank you for having me today. Well, uh, I was born and raised in Iran, so I started Taekwondo when I was 14. And uh, I had invitation from my best friend. She proposed me, do you want to start Taekwondo? I was like, yes, why not? When I start Taekwondo, when I start the training, I, I feel like confidence and I feel like I'm more powerful. I love when I was kicking, like the fight, all the details in the training, the teamwork uh, with my teammate when we were together. All of these details for me, I feel so good. I feel like I have a new family, new friends. So because of that, I continue Taekwondo. And when I start competing, I was very good for my coach. And she told me, if you want to continue professional, you can have a good future in Taekwondo. And uh, I was like, yes, why not? And uh, I feel, as a young girl in Iran, I felt I have an identity. Like, I feel powerful, a strong girl. So because of that, I decided to continue Taekwondo. It was more for my mental health and like, like a trophy for me and still is like this. Um, for many women around the world engaging in sports, it's not just about physical activity, but it's also a form of resistance, isn't it? Uh, a means of empowerment. So how did practicing Taekwondo empower you in such a, a restricted environment? Well, uh, for example, in Afghanistan, to be a woman is not easy. And uh, when I was in Afghanistan, when I went to my country in 2020, and when I joined the national team of Afghanistan, uh, I faced uh, many things in Afghanistan. Like I saw there is no uh, equality here. They are not respecting female athletes. They are not supporting us. And I saw like, Everything is wrong here. Like, I don't see anything good. So for me, it became more, more than a fight in competition Taekwondo. I was like, I have to fight here. I have to win. I have to show that we have the power to make this fight, to win the competitions. And I'm not just a, how to say, like a simple girl for them. Like, mm. I don't know anything or I don't have any power. But for me, it was more a fight against that ideology of men in Afghanistan because they, see, they say that uh, martial art is not for girls. Even until now, they are telling me, you're not ashamed that you are kicking so high and they use my body in a bad ways, like they insult me. So I was like, I'm not ashamed of that and it's so beautiful when I kick. So for me, it's become more a way to fight uh, for gender equality in Afghanistan. Thank you very much. That's very inspiring indeed. 
Well done. Um, and today, even in France, I guess there are still challenges. We've talked about it as well during this forum, of course. What about the specific challenges you are facing here? Well, I left my country, Afghanistan, to be safe and to fight for my country in more like safe way with safety. But uh, I didn't know that uh, we have still Taliban out of the country in Europe, in US, everywhere. And uh, since I start complaining about the cricket national team of Afghanistan that they are normalizing Taliban and they are very good friends with them, I say that sports is about peace, but you are with the terrorists and with terrorists there is no peace. So how you can say I represent millions younger in Afghanistan that they are victim of gender apartheid when I say that, the fans, like, to be honest, when this happened, I saw, like, how the men are against us. Because they were like, oh, look at you first, how you dress. First, they start complaining me. Second, uh, you cannot represent uh, the woman of Afghanistan because it's not matching what you talk, your lifestyle, all of this. And you are kicking high, they are a champion. So for them, I, I'm nothing. So I was like, okay, I will show you uh, who I am. And I, I received many death threats, rape, that like in my WhatsApp, more than 8,000 messages in my WhatsApp I receive until now. Non-stop calls, all of them, they want to kill me, to rape me. And now for me, it's not possible to walk in the streets without a bodyguard. I have to be afraid of myself because I speak out against these people and just a simple words I say that they cannot represent us because they are with terrorists. And now I, that paid, that cost my safety, my freedom. I'm not free like before uh, I was in Paris. So when I received all of this, I was like, I'm not gonna stay silent for that. I went to the police and thanks to my lawyer, Ines, I, I called her, I said, I'm in this problem and they have my address. I don't know how, and my personal number, so we need to go to the police and I need to be protected. And thanks to the French police that they take it serious and now they are uh, protecting me from these people. I don't know until when, but this is the situation. I mean, can you imagine living your daily life while being inundated with threats? and having to live under protection because you want to be an athlete, because you want to practice Taekwondo, because you want to wear a skirt, and because you want to talk, express yourself in public. Um, that's something to ponder for us all here, of course. And um, on a more personal level, what are your aspirations moving forward in terms of um, both your sporting career and your activism. And by the way, did you set out when you mentioned that um, maybe uh, practicing Taekwondo was a form of resistance, but did you set out to become an activist? Was it part of the plan or did it kind of happen? I think uh, all the young girls from Afghanistan, if they are doing something that is illegal now, it's a fight, they are activists. And for me, uh, when I when I, well, when I went to my country, Afghanistan, when I saw, okay, what's going on here for the women, like, we don't have, it, like, they don't respect us, you automatically become an activist. If you really believe your values, that you have, you, ha you deserve to be free. So for me, this just, like, coming from my heart, and I was like, no, it's, it's not going to work like this, you know, I, I should have more uh, opportunity than you because of, what his story is telling about Afghanistan because always women are victim. So for me, it's all automatic and even now it's very hard for me because of what's going on and even it's hard for me to focus in my sport. But I always keep telling myself that there are millions of girls in Afghanistan stock and they are waiting for me and for us to be their voice because they are voiceless and they are uh, under the terrorist regime, the rules that it's so horrible. So for me, it's always my mother that she inspired me to keep going because of her and because of my sisters in Afghanistan, the young girls. They are my inspiration and uh, I will keep fighting until we can see some results. Fantastic. Thank you for that.
So to, um, to finish our conversation, do you have a message for the, uh, the millions of Afghani girls um, out there? And, and beyond that, a message for all the, uh, the women and for the men in, in this room and beyond? Well, um, my message to the young girls in Afghanistan, I don't know what I can say because it's so bad situation and what I can say there, I, I can say like be strong. <laughs> It's, it's a very bad situation. I mean, uh, we are not in their situation now. I just can tell them that uh, this will end one day because we started fighting and we will see one day the results. And I want to say everyone in this room and to the world that let's unite against gender apartheid in Afghanistan because what's going on now in Afghanistan is gender apartheid. And the world should recognize gender apartheid as a crime against humanity. And I hope all we fight for that until uh, women in Afghanistan are free. Thank you. Wow. Thank you for that. Marzia, I just, um, I just want to tell you how much um, we admire your courage and your resilience. It's really, truly inspiring and how delighted we are that you were able to join us today and share all your vibrancy and all your dreams uh, and your smile with us. It's absolutely wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for our guests. And yes, why not a stand up ovation because that's very much deserved. Thank you so much. Come on. For you, Marzia, and all your sisters, of course, back home in Afghanistan.